Adrian Beltre never won a World Series in his 21 big league seasons. He never won a single MVP award, nor did he win a batting title or ever lead the league in RBIs, OPS, or really any offensive category. He led the league in home runs only once, pretty much as a fluke. He made only four All-Star games. And yet, Adrian Beltre is undoubtedly one of the best and most unique third baseman ever to play the game. A player who registered over 3,000 hits, nearly 500 home runs, and racked up more than 200 defensive runs saved, nearly all tallied at the hot corner. He still holds the big league record for that, by the way. A player whose big league career started as a teenager, but who really didn't find any consistency until his 30s. Oh, and a player who's one of the most fun and beloved characters ever to step foot on a baseball field. So it's time to pay homage to a man who brought joy to countless fans, teammates, and even opposing players. It's time to step up to the plate and detail why there will never again be another player like Adrian Beltre. Just don't touch his head. Adrian Beltre didn't look destined for greatness for most of his life. He was a scrawny kid who grew up poor in the Dominican Republic. He loved sports as a teenager, especially tennis and basketball, but it was when he saw the Houston Astros all-star third baseman Ken Caminetti play on television when he was 12 that Beltre knew what sport he wanted to pursue and how he wanted to play it. Beltre weighed just 130 pounds as a teenager, but despite this, he did have a rocket for an arm and a smooth hitting stroke that showed promise to deliver power as he filled out. After a Dodger scout happened upon him at 15, he was promptly signed for just $23,000. As he progressed through the minors, Beltre did grow in size and strength rapidly, managing to make his major league debut with the Dodgers just four years later. The Dodgers had just traded away Hall of Fame catcher Mike Piazza to the New York Mets, and one of the players they'd received in return, third baseman Bobby Mania, had just gone down with an intestinal infection. And so, the Dodgers called in their 19-year-old prospect to step in. Beltre's first major league at-bat came against the Angels' Chuck Finley, and he wasted no time, roping a line drive RBI double down the line for his first big league knock. Despite this audacious start, Beltre would go on to look a bit overmatched that season, finishing his first year with just a 215 batting average and 7 home runs in 77 games. But before we get more into the baseball genius of Adrian Beltre, let's talk about our genius building sponsor of this video, Brilliant.org. I'm personally a bit of a data nerd myself, so I've really enjoyed their smooth, intuitive learning systems that have helped me get a better grasp of a scientific understanding of stats, and what their application is to my subject, in this case being baseball. Seriously, I started using them a while back after seeing a sponsorship in a different YouTube video from Funny enough, and the effect has been noticeable. Not really into stats? Well, they've got thousands of lessons, from foundational and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks, and more, with new lessons added monthly. That's right, AI classes for all of you out there interested in that burgeoning field. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash made the cut or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Again, that's brilliant.org slash made the cut for 20% off and to help support what we do here at Made the Cut. But now, back to our video. You'd improve in 1999, enough to earn a starting job at third base, managing to put up a 275 average with 15 homers and an above average 102 OPS+. Plus. He improved again in 2000, hitting 290 with 20 home runs and a 114 OPS+. Plus. Still just 22, Beltre had shown steady, incremental improvement. He was now considered a plus defender who could challenge for a gold glove soon, but still not an elite presence in the box overall. More of a solid regular than an all-star. But instead of taking a leap forward in 2001, he found himself not just fighting for his job, but his life. That winter, Beltre had undergone an emergency appendectomy back home in the Dominican Republic. His appendix had burst, and a botched operation left him with a serious infection. He lost 15 pounds, and while other players were still reporting to spring training, Beltre was attached to an IV. Adrian returned in May, but still wasn't 100%, taking a noticeable step back at the plate with a 91 OPS+, plus, his worst mark since his rookie season. His woes continued the following two full seasons, with him posting below average marks of 97 and 88 in 2002 and 2003, with just 44 combined combined home runs those years. Even with the invention of DRS in 2003, Belcher registered 25 that first season, the Dodgers had started to grow impatient. Critics called him fat. The Los Angeles Times wrote that he was a 5 o'clock hitter, a player who could dazzle in batting practice but never translate that ability into games. At age 24, Beltre looked destined to become just another glove first liability at the plate, perhaps even needing to move to a utility role in the upcoming seasons just to stay in the big leagues. Beltre knew he had a lot to prove in 2004. It was a contract year and it was make or break time for his starting position at the hot corner. And boy oh boy did he answer the call. During the first week of the season, he hit 478 with three homers, and he just kept going from there. By the all-star break, he was hitting 315 with 22 home runs and playing truly incredible defense. 
yet he still didn't make the All-Star team. That snub just fueled Beltre's fire. He ended that season with a 334 average, an OPS of 1017, as well as a league leading 48 home runs to go with 121 RBIs, 104 runs, and 200 hits. His OPS sat at an astronomical 163. The only player to have a higher war than Beltre's 9.6 was Barry Bonds. Beltre's career season resulted in a huge, at the time, five-year $64 million deal with the Seattle Mariners. But things wouldn't stay so rosy for Adrian over the course of the deal. Not only did his team miss the playoffs every year, but Beltre performed much like a mortal in every one of his campaigns with them. In 2005, he hit just 255 with 19 homers. He improved slightly to 258 with 25 homers in 2006, but still, there were rumblings of disappointment in Seattle, where press and fans alike were calling him a colossal free agent bust. The only thing he was really exceptional at at this point involved his glove after all, as he was routinely posting top 5 defensive metrics at third. But he wasn't signed just for his glove. In 2007, he had perhaps his best season with the Mariners, hitting 276 with 26 home runs and 99 RBIs, as well as receiving a long overdue first gold glove award. However, his OPS Plus was still just 12 points above average at 112. Beltran managed a similar season in 2008, with 25 homers, 77 RBIs, and a 266 average, as well as a second gold glove award. His defense was better than ever, and his 3.1 defensive war was the best in the majors. But Beltran's hitting in Seattle had never gotten close to what he'd accomplished that last year in Los Angeles. His final season in Seattle in 2009 was his worst overall. He missed more than a month after getting a bone spur removed in his right shoulder. Then he experienced one of the most painful injuries a ball player can undergo, suffering a ruptured testicle when a hard grounder caught him in the groin. Beltre was not wearing a cup and still didn't wear one after the injury. He finished his final season in Seattle with 8 home runs, a 683 OPS, a 379 slugging percentage, and just an 83 OPS plus. In his 5 years as a Mariner, Beltre averaged just 20 homers, a 266 average, and a mediocre 317 OBP. He hadn't managed to eclipse even 26 dingers once, and he was now 30 years old, with his best years presumably behind him. But it was then, in the midst of his struggles, that Beltre realized something. He needed to stop taking everything so seriously. It was time to be himself and have some fun. This was the moment that everything would change for Adrian. The underperforming Beltre signed a one-year, $9 million deal with the Boston Red Sox before the 2010 season. It was a flyer, essentially, his last real chance at a starting job. And the Red Sox immediately saw a big return on their investment. That season, Beltre exploded at the plate, close to a 321 average, a 919 OPS, and a 141 OPS plus, best since that fateful season in 2004. With the help of the Green Monster, he launched a league-leading 49 doubles and also hit 28 home runs. He was named to his first All-Star our team ever and finished the year with an incredible 7.8 war. But this was just the beginning. Thanks to his big season with the Red Sox, Beltre inked a six-year, $96 million deal with the Texas Rangers, who were coming off their first World Series appearance in franchise history. It was a controversial move at the time, with many Rangers fans being worried that their team was about to get the same production the Mariners had for the preceding half a decade. But Beltre put all these doubts to rest in his first season with the Rangers. 2011 would see Beltre start in his first All-Star game ever after a red-hot beginning to the year. And then, despite missing six weeks in the second half of the season with a hamstring injury, still post a 296 average with 32 home runs and a 131 OPS plus, just shy of his 2010 mark. His defense continued to be spectacular as well, with him earning another gold glove for his efforts. The Rangers won 96 games and made the playoffs for a second straight season. Thanks to Beltre's three home runs in Game 4, the Rangers ousted the Rays in the ALDS before eliminating the Tigers in the ALCS, with Beltre's RBI single off Max Scherzer giving them the lead in the decisive Game 6. Beltre's first World Series was a classic seven-game affair between the Rangers and the St. Louis Cardinals. After swatting four hits in Game 3, Beltre came to the plate against Chris Carpenter with his team down 2-1 in the sixth inning of Game 5. On an 0-1 curveball from Carpenter, Beltre went down to one knee and launched perhaps the biggest home run in Rangers history, tying the score and igniting the Rangers' come-from-behind 4-2 victory. The Cards won the next two games in the title in dramatic fashion, but Beltre had left a lasting impact on the series and on Texas fans overall. In 2012, the slugging third baseman picked up right where he left off, belting 36 home runs to go along with his second highest career OPS and 921. He was again an all-star starter and a gold glove winner, finishing third in AL MVP voting. The Rangers made the playoffs again, but lost to the Orioles in the wildcard game. It was also during these first few years in the Lone Star State that Beltre became an MLB fan favorite and a social media phenomenon, with his personality quirks and antics on the field giving rise to many viral moments. He threw his glove at balls roped past him down the line. He swung so hard sometimes he knocked off his own helmet or spun himself around like a pretzel. Once, after an umpire asked him to stand on the on-deck circle, Beltre dragged the mat to where he had been standing, immediately earning a hilarious ejection. He flipped foul balls at third base coaches, ran into the outfield to avoid tags, and engaged in standoffs at third base. There was seemingly no end to his playful spirit. 
What's more, Beltre's rapport with teammate Elvis Andrus led to a number of chuckle-worthy clips, especially when Andrus tried to touch his head, which, for some reason, was a special irritation to him. I've never liked people touching my head, Beltran once explained, not even my kids. Over the next four seasons in Texas, from 2013 to 2016, Beltre would continue to excel production-wise, averaging 25 home runs and OPS plus marks north of 125, leading all third basemen in both hits and average, while racking up another all-star appearance and gold glove. In 2015, he became only the fifth third baseman in history to hit 400 home runs, and then in 2017, he accomplished three more insane milestones, 600 career doubles, 5,000 career stolen bases, and 3,000 career hits, becoming the first Dominican-born player to break into the 3K club. Beltre hit just 273 with 15 home runs and a 99 OPS plus in 2018, and after the season announced his retirement after 21 years in the bigs. He'll be on the Hall of Fame ballot for the first time in 2024, at which point he should immediately be elected. So, what made Adrian Beltre so special? Well, let's start with his elite and consistent work with the glove. Defense is notoriously hard to measure, and more exact measurements like defensive war and DRS have only been in use for the past two decades, making it even more difficult to get reliable data. But nonetheless, both of these numbers paint him very favorably. Beltre is amongst the career leaders in both. Baseball Reference credits him with a career defensive war of 23.1 at third base, which is second only to Brooks Robinson's 39.1, which is based on much more extrapolation than Adrian's due to the time in which Robinson played. As for DRS, since they began tracking that in 2003, Beltre's career total of 222 ranks as the highest mark, not just among third basemen, but any position. And for context, that's almost 400 more than current Hall of Famer Derek Jeter. Those numbers reflect Beltre's ability to make every kind of play at third base, from using his soft hands to feel balls in the hole or down the line, or his bare hand to charge in on bunts. They also reflect one of Beltre's true superpowers, his arm. Beltre made 29 errors in his first full season, and he blamed his arm for most of them, so he made an adjustment, adopting a somewhat unorthodox throwing style in which he tried to plant both feet on the ground before whipping the ball over to first base nearly sidearm style. It worked wonders. His throwing accuracy improved and his errors went down. Beltre's manager in Texas, Ron Washington, a former big league infielder, once said, you wouldn't teach Beltre's style of play, but he's pretty dang good. Beltre also distinguished himself at the plate, becoming a truly elite hitter in his 30s, managing to pair some dominant seasons with his ability to consistently rack up counting stats. Part of it came with experience. He could always hit any pitch in any location in any count, but over time he achieved elite pitch recognition skills and became an excellent two-strike hitter. He also hit nearly 500 home runs despite spending large chunks of his career in two pitcher-friendly ballparks in Los Angeles and Seattle. In fact, Beltre finished his career with more hits, home runs, and RBI on the road than he had at home, a rare feat for a hitter. Another overlooked aspect of what made Beltre great was his mental toughness and resilience. He was a fierce competitor, every pitch of every at-bat. He overcame adversity after adversity to stay starting at the hot corner, and he showed incredible tenacity by coming back from not one, but two career lulls. How many players can pull that off? But it's not just the stats and longevity that made Adrian Beltre so special, it was the joy with which he played the game. Beltre's enormous heart and unpredictable eccentricities made him an easy player to love for fans across the country. His playfulness with teammates like Elvis Andrus was also in Deering. Anytime a pop-up was hit between the two players, it felt like anything could happen, including Beltre pretending to catch the ball as if it should have been his all along. Sometimes he would look genuinely angry with Andrus, but you never knew if he was or if he was just joking around. Beltre's flamboyant, good-hearted feuds with opposing players like Felix Hernandez and Miguel Cabrera also made for hugely entertaining viewing. He truly was one of the most good-natured and fun-loving players we've seen in baseball in a long time. Adrian Beltre's career numbers are some of the best that have ever been tallied, especially for a third sacker. 3,166 hits, 477 home runs, 1,707 RBIs, 636 doubles, 222 defensive runs saved, 5 gold gloves, and a career war of 93.5. And what's crazier, among third basemen, Beltre ranks first in RBIs and hits, and is third behind only Mike Schmidt and Eddie Matthews in home runs and career war. Only Brooks Robinson appeared in more games at the hot corner. Add to these numbers an indomitable personality that was truly one of a kind, and you can see why we at MTC believe we can confidently say there will never be another Adrian Beltre. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed the vid, and click this playlist for other essay videos just like this one. Have a great day.